What is going on everyone? This is Rancer and welcome to another Pokemon X and Y Wi-Fi battle for March the 28th, which is Friday, and if you've been paying attention to my weekly series, if you don't know, I'll explain to you. I upload one Pokemon X and Y Wi-Fi battle every Friday. And uh and sometimes it can be a mixture. It can be some matches why I won and some matches why I lost. And um uh, But anyways, um <laughs> and given my this preview and that is gonna be pretty damn long, so please um please bear with me, but I do need to explain a couple things quickly. Uh first of all, um let me explain a bit of my team. I am making a new team. I'm almost one hundred percent done with it. I just need to finish making a Vivalon for it. And uh I'm probably gonna test the team team after you get Vivalon on. And if it does not turn out the way I personally wanted it to be, then there's probably a really, really, really good chance that, um, then there's probably a really, really good chance that, um, that I may not be able to, that if, if I don't really like the team the way it is after I finish it, then I'll probably make a couple of replacements for the Pokemon. I'm thinking maybe if it doesn't turn out, I may replace maybe my Vivalon maybe with another special defensive wall, um, and, um, and I might also replace Star Raptor with Don Fan as my Rapid Spinner. Because my Rapid Spinner as of right now is my analog, but I'll explain the thing in a bit. Uh, I just need to fix, do a quick issue here. This is kind of funny because I did record this match uh, just earlier today. But, um, but uh, my grandma actually knocked on the door to give me a Slurpee, which is actually really nice, by the way. And before uh, this video was completely clean, you can see everything what's going on. However, though, as soon as she knocked on the door, I had to turn it off. I, it completely is now fuzzy now all of a sudden, which really sucks. Because I thought I fixed it, the issue, but apparently it does not turn out to be. Turns out that's completely wrong, but I'm trying everything I can just to fix this, and I don't think it's not going to matter. But anyways, uh, let's talk about my team quickly. Uh, my team contains my special defensive wall, Gujra. Which is going to be on this team, but I'm probably going to have to redo it because this is the first one I've ever perfect IV breed. But I didn't give it the right niche and I gave it the wrong AV stat, so I'm just going to um, stick with this one, at least for now, with the Soul Fast on it. Um, but I'm thinking when we do go to when I get more leftovers, I think I'll just give it leftovers overall. But uh, anyway, um, I do also have, like I said, my Avalok because my Rapid Spinner, but she doesn't have any hazardous thing so it was no worry and you might be wondering why I have an Avalog on this instead of maybe Dog Fan or anything like that it's basically because I actually like Avalog he's incredibly bulky on the physical side and yes true he is weak to stealth rocks and he has crappy special defense and speed but I do think Avalog is a lot better than what everyone else says because it's super duper great on the physical side plus it actually does because unlike Dog Fan it does actually learn curse which, if you decide to go with a cursed move set, he's gonna be super duper hard to take down. After just one or two, after just one or two curses, he is nearly impossible to take down because he gains access to recover and so forth. And if I do get Dogfan on this team, if I don't like the team the way it is after I get Vivian, then I'll probably give Avalon. I will place Rapid Spin on my Avalon with Curse just to make it incredibly tough to take down a big sweeper. At the same time, but anyway. I have my Mega Absol, and um, it has a pretty simple move set. A lot of people usually run on the Absol, but I actually am running a different set with this thing. I have a different move that most Mega Absols don't use, and you're gonna see why during near the end of the battle. I and and the next up is my Expa, who I just finished Perfect Ivy beating yesterday, and uh, it's Choice Specs with a very simple move set for it. And I might change a bit of the moves, but I don't really know. Expo's not the fastest, but he's not very, def and he's not really that, f and he is kind of frail, but he hits back extremely hard with a powerful boom burst and move. And, I, and just to keep in mind, yes, I did get the scrappy x and I did perfect IV, but it took me a while, but um, I managed to get it, which is really made me happy. And then there's my special defensive Tentacruel, who is from my rain team. And uh, if I do decide to add him into this team, I'll make a new one. They're just making all of this stalling Pokemon or supporter. And then I have my Intimidate Star Raptor, which I do not have a Reckless one at all. Um, if I get a friend of my Wish Star Raptors, then I'll probably replace this one on a different team. Maybe with one with Choice Scarf. I don't really know. Okay, I just need to fix on here. Okay, uh, anyway, there we go. And, uh, 
And uh, let's take a look at my team. My my team's uh, my opponent's team is named Zenshi, who has a YouTube channel. Uh, I think I did find the right one, I think, but I really am not sure. But I think, but I'll give you the link to the channel that that is supposed to be her. But but basically, she uploads gameplay footage and stuff. And uh, and yeah, whatever. And so looking at her team, uh, I know that you can't see, but again, when my grandma interrupted my recording, I I literally cannot make it see the things clear now. Um, I think it just becomes random, but I don't really know. But anyway, her team contains a lot of Pokemon that are in very, very low tiers, as far as low as any tier, but she surprisingly did pretty well with this team. Actually, not top level play, but did, but still did pretty good, regardless. Uh, it was a good match. First time I fought her, I completely got swept by her Whimsicott, which is what she has on her team, as you can tell, uh, which is this Pokemon right here. Actually, a Whimsicott. And I completely got swept by it because I completely made so many bad misplays. And I and I found out that one of my Pokemon can actually take a Moonblast from it and kill it off back in return. Which is what I should have done to begin with. She has a Licky Licky, a Fur Fur. And I might make myself a Fur Fur someday in the future, but I probably will explain later on. She's got a Wigglytuff, a Raichu, and a Pokemon, which is, is this thing right over here. I really have no idea what it's called, so I really don't know. But anyway, let's solve the battle. Now, when I first actually fought her, actually, I decided to actually start off with x -Bot, but she started with Raichu and had Folk Splash, which really took me by surprise, then killed my x with one Folk Splash, which really stinks, but this time I decided to start with a different, I started to send in Gudra. However, though, he does actually start off with this thing, and I really don't even know what it does, so I switched into Avalanche. I know this thing's a physical attacker, but she actually goes straight into the Toxic, and that's going to be very helpful for me because since Gucci didn't get toxic, didn't get a toxic, I'm actually completely fine with that. So, so he's going to withdraw into his Wigglytuff, and I do know for a fact Wigglytuff was a bad matchup for my uh, my uh, Avalon because while while Wigglytuff doesn't really have the best special attack or attack power, she does learn Flamethrower, which I honestly do not want Avalon to die to the stain again. So this time I'm just gonna switch back into my Gudra. But she does actually make a really good play here. She actually goes straight into the Dazzling Gleam. Which again is gonna be very, very helpful. Again, I'm just gonna try to set this up. So anyway, I go straight into my War because this is Wiggle Tough's part fairy type. I really cannot hit it with Dragon Pulse. And we both are doing pretty much the same amount of damage again. This Gudra I have so far is an Assault Vest Gudra, and trust me, it's a really damn good move. I know Leftovers is way better for... I know that Leftovers is way better for Gudra, but trust me, I think Assault Vest is really, really damn good. So I get a Flamethrower. It becomes a crit, but she lives at 1 HP, but I do get the Burn, which really, really is good. She goes to that one game, and I do not die from that thanks to my really good bulk and thanks to Assault Vest saving me pretty much. And honestly, if I did not have a Soul Vest and this thing had Perfect IV or EV, Full Max EV Special Defense, I think she could take the same amount of damage without. So as I don't know. Uh, the Burn does finish off really tough. And honestly, look at the rest of this team. I still have my Tentacruel's backup. So I'm actually going to let him sack off my Gudra. So I can send in my Star Raptor with the Intimidate. And since this thing is a physical attack in Pokemon, it is going to be very helpful. It goes straight into Sucker Punch, which I didn't really know it could learn this move, but luckily thanks to Tim that does no damage to Star after. So I go straight into U-Turn, that did a lot of damage, and judging by how much that damage did, and keep in mind I am Life Orb, this thing's not very bulky. It probably has really bad defense, and I knew I probably should have just went straight into the, uh, so I should have just went straight into the close combat, but, uh, that was just my idea, but since I now know for a fact that I can kill it pretty much with a close combat, So I decided to do a double switch. The reason I did was because is because I was predicting him to maybe switch into maybe Whimsicott. That's why I sent him back Star after. But nope. He actually decided to stay and try to go for Protect. Just the Toxic saw me, which luckily I switched, and that's really good. This time, however, I went straight into the I went straight into Roost because since he's negative two, none of his attacks will do anything. So I went straight for the safe Roost. And luckily, here comes his Whimsicott. 
And this is what I'm going to mention before. Remember when I said before the beginning of the video that I really should have used it a Pokemon against this one since it takes a hit? You're going to see. Star Raptor is actually the one that's the only one on my team that does take the Moonblast very well. And what is the card is a Park Fairy type. And that's stab too. That's ridiculously good. So anyway, I go straight for I just go straight for the Brave Bird. It really just immediately takes away all of his HP. You know what I'm saying? I do manage to live all the week and I manage to live the freaking uh Life Orb, leaving with only 4 HP left. And here comes this Pokemon. Um, he actually goes straight to the Soaker Punch. I actually went for the Roost, since I am faster than this thing. So, even if it did use Return, I am still faster than this thing anyway, regardless. So, but I actually did it. But I did wait for the Roost, predicting the Soaker Punch. So, and it did pay off. And here I went for another Roost. I went, I went for another Roost just to do as much damage as I could. Or, I mean, get back as much lives again. And he still goes for return. And it still does a decent amount of damage. It does a decent amount of damage. So, I will strain the close combat, which is going to annihilate this thing. Because he, like, disappears in all the rapid punches. He disappears completely. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, close combat manages to take it out so damn easily because it's so frail. And, uh, now here comes his Alexander, which is his fur, which is, uh, uh, sorry, I mean he, I mean her fur fur. Here I went straight into user. I could have just went straight for close combat, but I am fearing that he might take out Star Raptor. I do need to save Star Raptor, who's going to easily take care of this thing later on. So, I'm going to send in my own Absol. Now, the reason I send in Absol over my Avalog is just because you're going to see the move that's going to help me out against this fur fur. Um... So I do immediately Mega Evolve. Okay. And you can see, this is a move that almost no Absol players usually run. I've actually run a Will-O-Wisp on this thing. And I didn't even know this thing could learn Will-O-Wisp. So I figured, you know what? I'm going to have some physical walls. Why do I, I'm going to probably give him this move so that way, so that, that way it can help my physical walls take hits better. Luckily, as you can tell, after that burn, I live at just 1 HP left. And here's something I don't really understand. I knew for fact he was going to go for return because I'm way too unlike. I go straight to Sucker Punch predicting that. But for some reason, she Furfru avoids the Sucker Punch, but it still went for return regardless. Like, wait a minute. Sucker Punch is 100% accuracy. It only works if the opponent goes for an attack. And that's exactly what it did. It went straight into return, which is an attack. I go for Sucker Punch. For some reason, Furfru avoids it for some reason. But, and I died for some, and I died for, and my Absol dies completely for no reason. I don't get why. But anyway, <clears throat> um, I went for Roost because I thought he was going to go for a, I thought he was going to go straight into Return, but he actually doesn't do that. He goes straight into Thunder, which is actually going to help him take it, get rid of Star Raptor, or help her Star Raptor. It activates Kongard, which thanks to the combination of Fur Coat and Kongard, he becomes incredibly bulky. As you can tell, he takes that close combat so damn well. And, uh, but, unfortunately, though, but, unfortunately, though, um, he's, it, it is will o and it did get intimidated, so it does absolutely no damage to me at all. That return does nothing. But I do get Parahax, which sucks because I went for the Roost that time. And, honestly, though, out of all my Pokemon, I think Starter was the MVP of this game. Because, MVP, because Starter did a really, really good job on a lot of the Pokemon. So he sends him right here, and because I got Parahax, it does outspeed me. So, I do go down by the Thunder Man just to land. And here, my only chance was to go into Tentacruel. And he goes for Thunder, and it misses, and I go for Sludge, but does, does a decent amount. I was like, okay, well, Thunder does miss a lot. It does have 70% accuracy. Goes for Thunder again, and it misses again. I was like, oh, wow. I feel so bad for her. And she does manage to land the Thunder. And I and the reason I sent in Tentacruel over... um. Over Avalog was actually because that uh, I really because I know for a fact I can take a Thunder nice okay despite Avalog's shitty special defense. The reason it was that actually because that I don't want to send an X Bug because it outspeeds and has Focus Blast. And I didn't send an Avalog just in case um, if the Earthquake doesn't kill him. Yeah, but since he did man, but since uh, since Raichu did miss her, did miss a Thunder pretty much two times. That is going to be pretty helpful. That really helped me out a lot. I did feel bad for her for missing that, but it really came out handy. She sends in Licky Licky, and, and it has Quick Claw, which I thought, is it really 
is it really more slower than my tentacle? But then again, tentacles, uh, tentacle is speed did cut, did cut in half. So since then that it, the swords, she activates sword stance, and she does surprisingly take the slow drone well. But I do get the poison on it, which is really gonna help me out during this battle. It's really gonna help me out. And she does manage to land the return. She does land the return, and I did now know it's faster than tentacle. So I'm gonna switch directly to my coffee table, who pretty much, to be honest, it easily completely walls this thing completely. As you saw how much damage that return did, that return did absolutely no damage to Avalog. Does absolutely nothing. That's a stab, by the way. A stab return, full happiness, plus two attack. It does no damage to Avalog. My God, look, that is how incredibly bulky this thing really, really is. And um. That was the last poke, and as you can tell, um, it was not a top-level play sort of competitive type of match. But surprisingly, since she did pretty well in this match using very, very low-tier Pokemon, definitely she actually did a really good job of this match. And uh, if you are watching this entry, you actually did a pretty good job. You did a pretty good job with this team and stuff, so good game anyway. Uh, not a top-level play or anything from both of us, but it was still a good game regardless. So, so. Thanks for watching, everyone, for watching this episode of Pokemon X and Y Wi-Fi Battles. Hope you enjoyed it, and once I finish making my team 100%, I'll play through Wi-Fi Battles, um, probably upload the best ones I had, and then, um, and then I'll let you know my final thoughts on the team after I do a couple of episodes with them. And um, if it doesn't turn out the way I want it, or I just don't like the team the way it is, then I may make added some new pokes as replacement. Like I said, I may replace Starter with Dawn Fan as a backup physical wall for Avalog, who's the Rapid Spare. And then, and if I do do that, I'll give Avalog Curse by replacing Avalog's Rapid Spin with Curse, making it an extremely tough wall to take down. And uh, and I'm thinking I may replace Vivillon with another special defensive wall if, if Vivillon doesn't help out too much, or I could replace Explow. I really don't know it as of right now, but I really don't know, but. But anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.